In this lesson, we will look at the scientific method. The scientific method really is a systematic process of discovering new laws in physics. So uh, we will look at this in great detail. So please pay attention. Understand that natural philosophy is the precursor to science. It is a body of knowledge accumulated through the philosophical study of nature and the physical universe. Science per se is more than just a body of knowledge. As a matter of fact, it is a way of thinking inspired by a systematic approach to understanding the universe that uses observable, testable, repeatable, and falsifiable experimentations to understand how the nature behaves. Let me ask you an important question. Have you ever wondered how you come to know some of the things you know? For example, if you touch the metal handle of a door, it feels cold. But if you touch the door itself, it feels warm. So the question I want to ask you is, are they at the same temperature? How do you know? It is not a good idea to jump off a tall building or maybe to run into a street without looking for oncoming traffic. Going back to the question earlier about the door handle. Is the handle and the door really at different temperatures? Suppose you are a passenger in a convertible moving along a straight road, maybe on a windless day, and you throw a basketball up. Would you expect the ball to land back in the vehicle? or in front of the vehicle or behind the vehicle. Let me give a common example. You are t you, let's say you take a vacation and you and your family are driving across town or across country and you so happen to collide with a bark or for example, a fly or maybe even a bird, which is a common occurrence in the summer. So the question is, during collision between your car and the bird, which one exerts a greater force on which? Is it the bird or your car? How do you know? Ultimately, what guides your decision-making processes? How do you know what you know? And how do you know that what you know is correct anyway? This brings us to one point. There are many ways to acquire knowledge. Each has its advantages as well as disadvantages. Let me pause here for a minute and clarify this. Science is both a body of knowledge, a way of thinking, as well as a systematic process through which that knowledge is acquired. Now, I am a teacher. I love what I do. I love to teach. You know, to do what I do now, to inform 
people and educate people to make the right choices so as to live a better life. That is what I believe is my calling in life, to help you make a better you so that you can actually enjoy life and live a meaningful and a purposeful life. Therefore, as a teacher, you as a student, most often you accept information from me as true. Maybe because you respect and trust that what I am saying is true. We all know that this approach to knowledge is the most common, but it comes with a big price tag. It comes with its own disadvantages. We call this approach to knowing as authority. In other words, when you listen to someone in a position above you, the information you get is coming from a position of authority. Understand that when we depend on authority figures to tell us what is true or what is incorrect, we have to trust that they have carefully evaluated all the evidence with the best of interest in mind. We have, history has actually shown us that this is not always the case. And relying on authority can actually lead us to accept facts as truths and truths as fact or completely or incomplete information. The experiences we have with the physical world through our interactions with it also help us to develop mental models of how the world works, without which we would not be able to understand our experiences. Now, before I dive a little bit ahead of me, it is important for you to understand that one way through which we acquire information is authority. Now, another way through which we acquire information is through our daily experiences with the physical world. You know, when we experience the physical world, we actually develop mental models of how the world works. Now, the sum of these mental models form our intuition. 
Intuition often is commonly referred to as a hunch. You know, that strong feeling about something that you just feel it is true, but you really cannot explain why it is true. This deeply rooted beliefs reinforced by our personal experience with the world often leads to misconceptions about the physical world. Do you remember the example I told you before? If you touch the door handle of a door, it feels cold. Another good example is if you walk on carpet, it feels warm, but if you walk on tire, it feels cold. So if you ask someone, are they at the same temperature? I can certainly guarantee that 80% of the time, people will say that, you know, the tire is at a lower temperature. But the truth is, they are at the same temperature. The fact is, you feel cold on the tile and you feel warm on the carpet. But the truth is, both the carpet and the tile are at the same temperature. You see, this is a common example of how our experiences with the physical world can lead to a common misconception. So how do we know if they are at the same temperature? We follow a systematic process through observation and, and, and experimentation that leads us to come to the conclusion that they are at the same temperature. We call this process the scientific method the scientific method. Another typical example would be you release, let's say, a bowling ball and a basketball on a ram. Identical inclined planes. The question is, which ball reaches the bottom first. Let's assume that the inclined plane is super smooth, so much so that there is no friction. Will the bowling ball reach the bottom first or the basketball? Or will both balls reach the bottom at the same time? The question is, the answer in your mind is that response based on a feeling, a hunch, or is it based on experimentation? Now, students often use their intuition when they encounter unfamiliar situations. Understand that these powerful feelings cause us to accept ideas as truth really without critically evaluating the basis for the feeling. Sometimes it may lead us to make the right choices based on our prior experiences in similar situations, but research in education really have shown us that some of these perceptions or mental models we have developed based on our experiences with the natural world are incomplete or outright completely incorrect. And unless we confront these mental models and correct them, we will keep on making the wrong decisions when we encounter that particular situations. Now, in science, the most common means we acquire knowledge is through what I call logical reasoning or simply logic. 
there are essentially two types of logical reasoning. You have logical deduction and logical induction. Let me say that again. There are two types of logic. You have induction and you have deduction and they are totally different. Now, logical deductions actually occurs when a conclusion is claimed to follow necessarily from its premises. So, if the premise is true, then the claim will also be true. In this particular case, we are actually reasoning with a theory. Understand that a theory is an explanation of a set of facts based on a set of repeatable and testable observations that is generally accepted within the scientific community to be true. On the other hand, a premise is a previous statement or a preposition from which another is inferred or follows as a conclusion. Let me give you an example. But before I give you the example, I want to repeat the definitions. Let me remind, recap the main points. The most common means through which we acquire knowledge in science is what we call logical reasoning or simply logic. There are two types of logical reasoning. You have logical deduction and uh, logical induction. Logical deduction occurs when a conclusion is claimed to follow necessarily from a premise. So if the premise is true, then the claim will also be true. Here we are actually reasoning with a theory. But the question is, what is a theory and what is a premise? In simple terms, a theory is an explanation to a set of facts or a phenomena based on repeated and testable observations. For example, if when rain falls, you, you will most likely on a sunny day see a rainbow. You may come up with an explanation of why rainbows form. If that explanation is true in most of the cases, then it becomes a theory. So a theory is an explanation of a natural phenomena based on a set of repeatable and testable observations that is generally accepted within a group of scientists. On the other hand, a premise is a previous statement or preposition from which another statement is inferred or followed.